Hey everybody, welcome back to my virtual studio here in Vermilion. Today we are painting this sunrise scene at Lake Bled in Slovenia. If you haven't painted with me before, I will link below where you can find a playlist of all of my step-by-step -step paintings here on Vermilion. Um, I will also link below a playlist of VR accessory reviews. Today I'm using the Kiwi battery strap and the Kiwi grip covers um, while I'm doing this. So if you want to check out any accessories for your Quest 2, I will link that playlist below. But let's jump into the painting. All right, so here we are in the studio. Here I just have my blank canvas. I've got my reference photo from my original acrylic painting up here as well. But before we get into that, um, on your menu screen here, I'll bring it down here so you can see it. If you're new to this, go to the Save a New, hit Start a New Painting, and hit Yes. You can see other paintings I've done there. And then if you want to bring up anything else, well, you're probably watching this in the browser, so that's in the top there. And we are going to be using, in the settings, we're going to be using our canvas mixing sensitivity quite a bit. To start, I'm going to set it just to its default spot right there. I'm going to leave the paint thickness up, and that's all I'm going to do there for now. I'm going to head back here so I have my reference image. You can just use the reference image that <clears throat> you're seeing. So this one here, I originally did this one on an 8x10 uh, stretched canvas, an acrylic paint, like I said before. So, but I'm just going to kind of... Uh, increase that size a little bit here too. So you can see here a 16 by 20 and put my hand in the middle there, we are good to go. Then you can increase and decrease that size as you would wish. Um, I will be increasing it later when I'm working on some detail but for now I'm just going to leave it um, as it is. So if you haven't ever painted with me, with me before, thank you for joining me here today. Um, I'm going to hopefully teach you not only how to paint this image, but also just how to paint um, in general, some general techniques that you can use and that will help you out as you, as you go. Um, so when I paint, especially nature paintings, I like doing the background first and working my way to the foreground because that allows for a smooth layering between the um, between the different parts because um, I find if I paint the foreground first then you're trying to paint around it and it just doesn't work very well so I like to start in the background and work my way forward I also like to do a little sketch just so I know where things are so on vermilion when I'm on vermilion I like to make sure I go to my layers and again if you're new layers is this one right here and I'm just gonna make sure I'm on the first layer and for me I'm gonna turn on my um, projector here and again if you want to use <clears throat> my reference image as well it's on my website I've linked where you can find that in the description below so you're, if you're watching this in Vermilion just scroll down on the YouTube page click the link in the description it'll take you to that you can do whatever kind of sketching you need and then you can come back to it um, here as well Sorry, I just got a notification. My left controller's battery is low. Yeah, it just it just uh, died on me here. Just give me one second. I'm just gonna replace that battery. All right, I'm back here, sorry about that. Okay, so what I like to do for for my background here, you can see I've got this going on here. I usually just take this dagger color shaper and I'll mix a little bit of black with a little bit of white, just make a nice gray color. And then I just go on here
and I'm just going to add in where everything is. All right, and that just gives me a general idea now, if I turn that off, where everything's going to be. I can continue to use that little projector thing uh, throughout if I need to, and you can as well. So now I'm going to go into my menu here, go to layers, and I'm going to start painting on layer two. Um, and the reason being is what I just drew on those lines, I can go back to layer one later and just erase them and then they'll be gone and I won't be won't be uh, bothering any, any other layers that I've got going on there. All right, so for, I'm just gonna turn that projector off for now. Reset my palette there with the Y button. For our background, you can see we got nice blue, purple, pink, orange, and you know, yellow and orange going on here. So I'm going to take our two inch brush here. I'm going to take our palette. I'm going to take some of this lighter blue, some of the darker blue, mix a little bit of that together. Take just a hint of red over here. A little bit of white. There we go. And that's kind of like that blue that I'm looking for here. Could maybe get it just a little bit more saturated. Just making sure that canvas sensitivity was turned up. Um, I feel like it's a little bit too saturated still, so I'm going to take just a little bit of this raw umber over here as well. Mix that in there. Now I'm gonna grab some of this, I'm making some purple here. I'm gonna add some white. Add a little bit of this raw umber to it just to mute it a little bit. And when you're blending, you just wanna do nice broad strokes left to right. It's definitely going to need a lot more white to it. I cleaned off my brush and now I'll just work my way back in. That took away a little bit too much of that blue there on me, so I'm just going to add a little bit back. And you want to make sure you go past where those mountain lines are going to be. So that when you're doing that next layer, you're not finding you have little white spots around. And I'm just just really light on that on that canvas there. Okay, I'm gonna get just some pure white here. Just mix some of that in here. I cleaned off my brush, just going at it again. I cleaned off my brush. I'm gonna start at this far end. Work my way down here. Take some of this really light on my brush here. Okay, cleaned it off. Now I'm going to put some of that just on the tray in front of me, just so I have that, just in case I need it. I'm going to clean that off. Now I'm going to take some of this yellow ochre, yellow oxide color here, mix a little bit 
of white with it and take some of that blue and red kind of just making like a grayish color here just doing one stroke of that then I'm going to take this nice orange color here put this down and now I'm going to just go and blend that into each other a little bit more purple coming back down in here a little bit more blue up in the top okay now I'm gonna grab some of this orange orange color just a little bit there mix that in there make this a little bit brighter of an orange that's perfect mix that in I feel like I still need a bit more blue up in the top there a bit more maybe dark purple in there and light purple in there I had too much it turned too gray on me there I'm gonna take this blender brush now and I'm just going to go up and down first kind of like this as you can see blending things out it's gonna kind of blend some of those together oh actually first hold on sorry oh no I did get right down there that layer that mountain line, mountain line layers up there and now I'm just gonna go vertical wise as if that's where that's the kind of the direction of whatever clouds are in the air. Okay, let's take that two inch brush again. I'm gonna take a little bit more blue here. Take a little bit more purple and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of this yellow oh, that's quite a bit mix some of that in here and just do a stroke right here and those that purple and that orange does not want to mix for me okay we're gonna try something else here we're gonna turn down that mixing sensitivity grab some of this orange paint it over top there perfect and grab some of this blue paint that over top there grab some of this light purple paint that right up to it there okay now I'm going to turn that mixing sensitivity back up Just creates that that line for me there, right? Eh? It doesn't like that. Yeah, that orange and that purple does not want to go together. Okay, let's try something else then. <laughs> let's take and then we'll take an even lighter purple here do a brush stroke of that 
in there as well, some really light orange. Do a brush stroke of that, an even lighter orange. Okay, let's try that out. All right, we're just gonna go with that for now. And if I need to adjust that, I'll come back later and adjust that. So I'm gonna to go to my layers again, go to layer three. So then at the end, if I want to come back and adjust that background, um, I still can and I, it, won't, it won't affect anything. All right, so layer three, we are going to work into these mountains in the background and then um, go from there. So for these mountains in the background, you can see that they are pretty muted and they're muted of colors that we've already started using here. So I'm going to take um, the smooth short flat to start and oh And we need some of this purple that we've already started using here. So I've saved some down on my little tray down there. I'm going to bring some back up here. Bring some of the darker purple that I have as well. I'm going to add some black to it. And a little bit of white. Just to hopefully kind of mute it a little bit. And so we're not going... I keep doing that. We're not going too dark here. And all I'm going to do right now is just box in these mountains and I'm going to go into the settings here and turn down my mixing sensitivity for now because I don't need any this to mix in with anything not that it would because I'm on a separate layer if you remember All right, I'm just gonna go to there with that color. Now with this lighter purple. Load up that brush. And just fill that space in. Fill, fill, fill. We're covering up all that drawing from before, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to turn that sensitivity back up. Now that I've got those layers in there. And I'm just going to take the bristle short flat so now I just pressed over right using the, the bristle short and I'm gonna mix here a little bit first I'm gonna take a little bit of red 
we're going to take some of this purple that we that we've been working with grab some white okay we need to do more than that let's take a cool white a bit there there we go we're just making a nice pink color with that so i'm going to use that here in just a second use this bristle short i'm going to take some of this lighter purple that i was using and just go in on this far away mountain here and you'll have to reload your brush as you go but just kind of paint in some texture onto that mountain and by using the, this bristle brush that creates nice lines for us kind of showing a little bit of that texture that we're creating and if you want to grab some of the more purple purple that darker purple feel free to do that too especially on a side that would be considered to be kind of the shadowy side And right on the top, we'll add a little bit there too. And a little bit more right up in there. Okay. I'm gonna do that same thing now. Sorry, I just felt like I needed a little bit more. So we'll do that same thing right over here on this mountain. Just creating some texture throughout it. up the side of this mountain over and up this one here now I'm going to take that pink that bright pink and I'm just going to use that right on the top of this mountain here and this is going to be right down in here a little bit too oh that was a little bit too much right down in there this is going to be where the sun is hitting on this mountain face here. That's going to come right down onto that guy there and down. All right, now as we work into this side over here, I'm gonna need a little bit of this orange, the yellow ochre that we have. Actually, hold on, let's just take some of this yellow, oxide yellow ochre stuff. I'm gonna add some pink to it. Okay, that's gonna be, let's turn this around here. Take some of that pink that we have in here too. That orange and that uh, purple just don't get along right now. Yeah, it just turns right to gray on me. Okay, so I'm going to 
turn down that sensitivity there. So I can add some of this orange here onto the, this mountain. I kind of got it in the sky there. I need to I have to smooth that out a little bit and see what happens. Okay, that's okay. I can work with that. Okay. I'll grab the bristle one back again. I'm going to take some of this pink. Add it kind of throughout there as well. And down a little bit back on this mountain. And then just smooth that out a little bit here. Leaving a little bit of texture, but not as much. Down here, we'll smooth that out a bit more because it can. All right, that's good for those back mountains now. Um, I'm going to leave it on the other layer. Turn, uh, okay, no, we can leave that sensitivity down. And try that in my hand the whole time. Uh, keep going with our smooth, short, flat brush here. Now I'm just going to box in where we want those trees to be. So for that, I'm literally just going to take some black over here, some of this purple that we had. Oh crap. There we go. If you want to use some of the brown instead, that's totally fine. We just want like a really dark faded purple. That's what we're going for here. Our back layer is almost black, then we're going to work our way forward there. All right, so I'm going to take the darkest, pretty much black, just with that little bit of purple in there. And with that here, I'm just going to go and fill this in. almost to where it meets the mountains, but I'm going to stop just short, and I'll explain why in just a minute. And we have this side as well. Okay, now I'm just going to go a little bit more carefully. I just don't want to go too high into those mountains with this color here. So I'm just going to get right up nice and close here. And we'll go a little bit up there like it does in the reference. If you ever want to change anything, if you feel like something would look better a different way, definitely feel free to do that, right? This is, this is your own painting. I'm just here facilitating a little bit for you. All right, got that in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bristle fan brush. I'm gonna grab that next layer of purple and I'm just going to keep it vertical here and just dab that in vertic vertical wise there. And that's gonna help it look more like trees are on that shoreline. And you can go right above that line that top line onto the top of the mountain a little bit. You don't need to go you don't need to go a lot, but you do want to go a little bit to help that look more natural 
like well like nature right again just with that next step of purple if you want to do any horizontal ones along the shoreline there or even right along the top just feel free to do that okay do the same on this side over here maybe I'll start with some horizontals and remember this whole time I have that canvas mixability turned down because I don't want these colors mixing together I want them to be to be separate Okay, now I'm going to take that lighter color and do that exact same thing. If you feel like it's not as much of a change as it should be, take some of that lighter purple that we used up in the mountains, line it in there a little bit, and go for it. If you want to take just a little bit of blue in there as well. Feel free to do that. Okay, do that with the other side here. So I just felt like I could see that line of black a little bit too uh, clearly behind here. So I'm just taking a darker highlight again and just adding some of the in throughout here. And that'll help kind of cover up those that line a little bit better. Okay, I'm just going to take a step back for a second, um, just so I can see how things are going. Okay, looking good. I'm going to just record a little video here, here for you. Here you can see everything a little bit more up close. I meant to do this earlier, so I didn't do it early, earlier. I'll do one again later before the end as well. All right, now let's, let's work into uh, the island. So I'm gonna turn on my projector here just so I can make sure I'm putting things where they're supposed to be. And so what I wanna do, I'm gonna take the smooth, oh, I always do that. It's probably painful for you to watch that. All right, good enough right there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna take the smooth short flat, shrink that down. I'm just gonna take some black. If you wanna add just a hint of purple to it, it'll just become pretty much a dark, dark, dark gray. That's fine. Just putting it on the tray in front of me here. And with this, I'm just going to go in here and kind of block in where this is going to be. Yeah.
Okay, that's good enough for now. Now for the buildings themselves. So our buildings are basically this dark purple mixed with a little bit more brown. There we go, pretty much that color there. The side of it is going to be this orange. Remember, I just used yellow ochre and some, pretty much some white for that. And I'm going to mix just a hint of that gray in there just to lighten that up a little bit. So that's, I'm going to put this down on my tray right now so I have it. This is the sun side of the building. And then for the rooftops there, they have a little bit more of this brown tinge to them, the red, more the red brown. So I'm going to take this gray, mix some of that in there. This is going to be the dark side of the roofs that you can see. And then I'm just going to add some more of this lighter color to it here. And that'll be the light side of the roofs. Then other than that, it's pretty much just black, um, like a, or maybe a really, really, really dark brown for the top of the church there, the Santa Maria, the Assumption Church. And then the trees are pretty much black in front. I think we're good. I think those are all the colors we need here in front of me. I guess we could do a little bit of a lighter, but still brown for the one side of the of the top of the steeple there. If you can see, that's the color that it kind of looks like there. Put this on the palette. That's what we're looking like. All right, so for buildings I'm gonna to try to use this smooth short flat as much as I can because it has a nice horizontal and diagonal vertical I can do a lot of nice square shapes with it for some of it I will use the rigger brush um, and then we'll we'll go from there here so I'm gonna start with Oh man, this is painful, isn't it? It's not even that big of a deal if it's off slightly. It's just my own sense. Okay, there we go. We're good enough there. Hopefully I don't move it again. So here's the dark side of the buildings. I'm just going to turn this brush here. I'm going to turn on my assist here. lighten up this just a hair for this other side. I know this other side's technically not in the light, but it is closer to the light, so I do want to lighten that up just a bit. Nice, okay. Now I'm gonna work my way up. The citadel there. I'm using the ruler, you don't have to. Okay, turn that off. Do the dark side of this roof over here. the light side of the roof over here that's gonna go right to the edge there 
Okay. On the light side of the bell tower, steeple, which and whatever you want to call it. And on that dark side, I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter in some spots here. But we are going to go in and add some other details on, on here as well. I'm going to take the dark side of that stuff here. all the way across. Oh, I went a little bit too far actually. Let's undo that. It just goes to here. Okay, take the dark rooftop. It's going to come across. Cross, come down right to there. And again over here, it's coming right over. Go up. Okay, take the lighter roof color. right in there and it's coming right over in here as well okay take this light face color that's going to be going right on this side over here Now we will do, I'm going to grab the rigger brush here, really, really dark, black, and if you want for detailed work, I should have said this earlier, you can always increase the size of that canvas, good, you can still see it there. So then now when I'm trying to go in here and do these details, It's a bit easier to get those spots. This dark side is coming right up there. And then I've got a little bit of a lighter side here. To come up this side of the tower. Right to there. We'll have that kind of go off to the side just slightly there too. Great. Okay, then on the bell tower itself, we've got some really dark windows. That's too big. Right in there. That's still too big. Um, I'm just going to get the pointed round here. Get my dark. Okay, and then we've got another one down here. Good. OK, 
Okay, now underneath of each of these, I'll use the rigger for this. Underneath of this, I'm just going to do a dark line. Do a dark line as if there's a shadow. Dark line, dark line. A little bit of a line in between those two as well. Okay, then on these buildings here, we've got a line there, we've got a line, it's a little crooked line there, we've got a couple of windows here, we got a couple of windows over on this one here, just going to add a couple here and here. And I'm going to take my bristle short flat. I'm going to turn up that sensitivity a little bit. I'm going to take this darker brown and I'm just going to go in here just a little bit with this darker color. Same with the purple on this side of the tower. and in these buildings a little bit, just adding a little bit of texture to it, some darker texture to it. And that's gonna just help add a little bit to this part here. And notice that I missed with the light. There we go, that side of that building right there. But that's good now. Alright, I'm going to leave those buildings as they are now. Oh, hold on. No, I forgot one part. Sorry. Take your rigger brush. Nice and dark color, that whatever we have here. And we need to do this little steeple on this guy here. I had left that mixing sensitivity down a little bit, but that actually worked out in my favor, I think, for for that one. All right, I am going to turn that mixing sensitivity back down. Go back here. Now we, we need to just move in and do some of those trees. I'm just going to shrink this canvas back down. And for these trees, a little bit I'm going to use the rigger brush, a little bit I'm going to use the bristle fan brush. I think to start I'll use the bristle fan brush. And we're just going to use that really dark, dark purple that we were kind of using before. And I'm just going to go in here. And it actually almost needs to be black, otherwise it doesn't stand out enough versus what's right behind it there. And so then I'm just going to go in here and just dab in where these trees need to be. You can switch between kind of these vertical strokes or more horizontal strokes. All right there I got a little bit of white showing through so I'm just going to add a little bit denser foliage right around in there. We got some coming up beside the buildings here so you can always go right on up to these buildings. We got a big little thicket over here. And now down in front here, in front of all these, there's I'm going to add just a little bit of purple down in here as well. And same with on these trees, I'll add a little bit of purple.
And then with that rigger brush, I'm going to increase this size again. Ooh, I always do that. And I'm going to take the smaller rigger. You can see there's there's two. And I'm going to go in here and add some of these trees that are behind. Not pressing hard at all. I'm just going to accentuate a little bit. These ones as well. We got some coming on over here too. And anywhere where you feel like you need to kind of go in and just add a little bit of trees just to work or cover anything up, feel free to go in there and add that in there anywhere. All right. I'm going to shrink that back down. Take a step back just for a second. Great. All right, now we're going to work into the um, reflection. Now, if you want to, you can start on another layer. I'm going to start on a la another layer um, just so I have a bit more freedom. Uh, no, I don't need to. Leave it on the same layer. Okay, so I'm gonna start again with the two inch brush. Notice that the mountain here is only going to about there. So I only really need to start with purple and then work my way into the oranges here. So I'm just gonna grab some of that light purple. I saved it on the tree in front of me. I know you can't, maybe you can't quite see it there, but I'm gonna start with some of this purple up in here. Take some of the lighter purple I have on my, that's oh, pretty much the same. In that case, I'm going to grab a little bit of white and turn up my mixing sensitivity. Neglected to do that. some nice purple in there and then I'm gonna grab some of the orange that we were working with in here and that's pretty dark put a little bit of that right in there and that's still too dark for what I want to be doing though take some of this lighter stuff okay, that's okay for right there I'm gonna take a little bit of that off to the side there we go Okay, I need even lighter here now. And blend some of that together there. Okay, just need a little bit more. Oh crap, right in there. 
fix some of this purple. There we go. Okay, everything's, it's not bad. It's a little bit gray in there in the middle there, but that's okay. So here the sky was going this way, so now I'm just gonna do quick horizontals, blend things a little bit more. I feel like down here, it needs to glow a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm gonna go kind of down this direction here. Okay, I need some more. I'm just gonna take the smooth short flat, bring it up a little bit. Some more of this in here. some of this pink, put some pink in that sky right here. Get some almost yellow. I find when I'm trying to blend colors with the blender brush on Vermilion, I like to do the exact opposite direction that I want it to blend in the end, and then go in that direction, and then I find that it kind of lines itself all up nicer in that sense. If that makes any sense what I just said. All right, we're gonna go with that for now. Now I'm gonna take smooth short flat, Turn down that mixing sensitivity, grab some of this, oh that wasn't good, grab some of this dark purple here, draw in where these mountains are, I've got some dark purple right in front of me, just use that. here to there and now we've got some of this lighter purple coming in here coming down there so when I'm doing this reflection I'm not trying to make it perfect because it's just a reflection but I do want to make it close I'm going to turn down that mixing. Oh, it is already done. Okay, we're good. I'm going to take some of this light purple. Actually, switch to the bristle short. Take some of this light purple. And I'm going to just kind of brush that in where it would be here on this mountain. Actually, it should be going this way. Let's undo those. darker do some strokes that way then take some of this pink Some of this light purple I missed up here. Go back to the smooth short flat. Box this in a little bit more. Okay. Going back to the bristle and this pink. Get a 
bit of this darker purple. Bring some of this darker purple in here. Now take some of this orange. Go right on top of the mountain there. All right, now what I'm gonna do, oh wait, I'm not quite done yet. And now I'm gonna go in and block in these closer trees. So I'm gonna take, again, the smooth short flat Pretty much take a black here, box all this in here, Again, my canvas mixability is still down. Okay. Now I'm going to take the bristle fan brush and just like we did before with these colors, just dab some of this in here. Get some of the lighter color. That'll, that'll blend out there. If you have a few white spots in between, that's okay. Those will blend out. Dab those in there. Take some more of this purple. All right, now we're gonna go in and do the reflection of our island. So that's just where we want it there. Again, I'm gonna use those colors that I have below me. I'm gonna take the smooth short flat. First, I'm gonna take this really dark gray. Just kind of connect those a little bit more. And here you can see we have the, t the tower. So I'm going to increase this size a little bit here. Good, you can still see it good. I'm going to take our little rigger brush and I'll take the lighter side is going to be on this side. darker side will be on this side. I know I'm going a little bit to the side, but I just wanted to move it over slightly compared to what I had it in my painting. Okay. there's that. Now with my smooth short flat I'm gonna take the darker color 
move that up and in here. It's going to go right to there. Take a little bit of this purple in there as well. Take our lighter color. It's going right beside it here. Grab that rigor brush again, take the really dark, almost black, draw on those spots. It's going to fill in a few little spots around here that need to be filled in. Okay, now I'm going to take again the smooth short flat. And the darker roof color. Actually, hold on, sorry. First, I'm going to take my black. And do this little steeple here first. Because then from there, it'll be easier for me to I'm actually going to take the lighter roof color first. It's going to come down there, come down there. Take the darker roof color, it's coming this way. Take some of the darker wall color. And it'll go right there and right there. Put a little line in between them. Okay, same thing on the other side. Our darker roof color. Oh, what am I doing here? This way. And it's coming across to there. Again, here as well. lighter roof color it's coming in there coming in there it's gonna take this bit of gray here and just fill that little space in and we got this bright color right there a little bit of bright color right there and we've got our dark gray wall color here 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 as well and that can be extended a little bit there. Okay, now I'm going to grab our rigger brush. Just add in some of these trees. They don't have to be exact because we're going to be blending these out here in just a minute. I'm going to take the fan brush, get some of that dark color on it, and just dab a little bit of that in here just throughout. Okay. Shrink that down a little bit. We got a rough reflection here now. So with that rough reflection, sorry, I just want to fill in a little bit of those white spaces. Sometimes too much white when you're going to use the blender brush isn't good for you. Alright, so here's here's our basic. I'm going to take the blender brush. If you want to save it here for a minute, save it there. So you can always go back to this spot if you need to. I'm going to take it sideways to start and I'm just going to go... Oh, actually, hold on. I already see a spot. Just right here in the corner. Just need a bit more purple. Okay, so I'm just going to go horizontal there, brush that out. And I'm just going to go slowly to start. I'm not going to go around 
the buildings yet because I want to take some nice caution there. But I'm just doing some light horizontal. I'm going to come back in front of that building in just a minute here. Now with the buildings here, I'm just going to go really light, little horizontal strokes over top of them. Blend those out. Perfect. Now if you really want to, you can shrink down that blender brush so it's nice and flat. And along these edges, I'm just going to go and kind of drag out some of those colors from the mountains and little lines there and that's going to create more of that water like effect it's going to be careful around that spot but that's going to create more of that reflection effect for us there All right, I'm going to take a step back. All right, I'm, I'm digging it right now. Now we just need to add kind of that misty foreground. And I'm going to try, try it this way first. I'm just going to go to layer 4. I'm going to take a bristle fan, clean it off. I'm going to take some white. I'm going to take some of this pink. Make just a really, really light pink. I'm going to do the same thing. this purple a really light purple and with this I'm gonna oh, of course I didn't mean to do that not that I really need this I just want to look at it but I'm gonna shrink down my bristle brush here and I'm just gonna go sideways here like this I feel like that's a little too high right there I'm just gonna kind of go in here like this and then I'm just gonna try blending this out and see what it looks like oh yeah that's not bad actually because that's not messing around with the colors beneath it but it's still adding a nice little effect okay I'm gonna continue this way now I'll grab some of that purple that in there as well just gonna make it a bit more pink in some spots as if that little fog on the or mist I should say is catching some of the light rays coming down Oh nice, I like that. I'm going to take a step back, take a better look at it. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, I want to add just a little bit more of it. So I'm just going to take a little bit here, a little bit here. As you can see, not a whole lot. 
I just want to extend it down just a little bit. Okay, let's try that out. All right, I'm going to take a step back again. I think I'm just going to go a little bit more horizontal here to kind of finish that off. Remember, this is on a new layer, so I'm not touching anything else around it. I like that. I think that's good. Okay, now what you can do take your rigger brush, take a color we've been using throughout, and take this nice light orange, and I'm going to increase this canvas size a little bit, and down, I like to do the bottom left corner, actually you can't really see that too much, I'm going to take with this purple instead. this darker orange down here. You can sign it however you like. I usually like to do the year and my last name. So I just use the short rigger for that one. Leave it at that size for you. So now if you want to go through and adjust anything else, if you want to fix any of the mountains, just make sure you go back into the layer that you were on. If we really want to now, I can put that down. I'm going to go back to my first layer, grab the cleaning rag, and just make sure any of those lines that I drew are now gone. I painted over them all and so you you can't really I can't see any through but just in case something happens. There you go. Paint it over that and you are good to go so make sure you go in and hit save. Again um, one other tip for you here before we close if you have your paintings here and you click on the painting you're working on you can go back in the auto saves and fix anything that you would like to or if you want to restart from a certain spot I've had to do that a couple of times so that's that's there and then even if you click on one of those and save it you can save it as a new painting so it doesn't mess up any of the auto saves that you have here already um, and then you can go to the export button and I like to export one of each of these or you can share it right to Facebook and you can do 3D models there as well which are pretty cool um, I think that I think that's basically it. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me here today. I'm going to go to the outro now. All right, let's quickly. Yeah, I think that's basically it. I'm gonna go and give you a nice close-up now, first-person view um, of what I'm seeing. So here you can see everything nice and up close. How everything is. So thank you for joining me today and painting this scene with me. I hope you learned something new that you can take on to your next painting. Again, if you haven't checked out my other step-by-step -step painting tutorials here on Vermilion, I encourage you to do so. And you can also check out any VR accessory reviews that I've done as well. Both of those playlists are linked in the description below. Subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned for the next one, and we'll see you next time on Brand Sloan Artist.